I want to give a little plug because uh, I'm in the cultivation game now. Uh, you may have seen the pile of boxes out there. Um, in, a one, in some ways, uh, it was kind of unfortunate, but I guess the job was left to me. Um, I've sort of inherited almost 2,500, or sorry, 2,000 unassembled cultivation games. And it's uh, been a, a pain. Um, in fact, we had just set them up in our bakery before it got raided in December. And so our bake-off has turned into a game-off, which we finally actually kind of cleared out yesterday. And uh, we made about half them and had to ship the other half to another storage place. But I've got approximately a thousand cultivation games. And uh, we're selling them for $15 a piece, which is pretty much what it costs. We're going to be selling them through some stores, so they'll charge a little bit more. But we're giving one to all of our speakers here today. And uh, it's a really fun board game if you've never seen it before. It's an uh, island world and just uh, a blast. Um, I did have another product that I was going to promote. I'm so glad Bill is still around. Have you heard of hemp hogs yet, Bill? So I have. A milk chocolate truffle with hemp nut cream filling. So awesome. Made in Vancouver. And uh, I was only given one, so we're going to try to get some sent over to Vancouver. But if we're going to have more of these in Victoria here, it's because Bill's going to sell them in his store, right? And the way I'm going to make that happen is I'm going to eat half of this puppy. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeah. you gotta give it a snack. Hey, Ted, the funny thing about the funny thing about the hemp is they're only made at one time of the year. Oh no! Yeah. And today in North Vancouver, I went to the place and like asked them, I was like, hey, guys, hemp hogs. I found a package, and they were like, yeah, we make them from this time to this time. Okay. Well. But they might be in North Vancouver. Our next protest may be in North Vancouver. <laughs> We'll post it on our forums at herbology.ca. But I'm sure we'll get a link uh, to, to Jeff's video that he made. There'll be a link to all this stuff on there. And uh, yeah, damn, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I've been a vegetarian for 15 years now, and uh, hemp is really critical to my health. And you could become a cannabis plant too. <laughs> you just gotta eat it, right? You got a question, or what are you doing? Oh yeah, there's an event happening at City Hall Wednesday night. Uh, David Bratzer, um, a couple of people, Donald McPherson, is that it? From uh, Vancouver Health Authority or something? Yes. Yeah. No. Anyway, there's a big talk at City Hall tonight. Or Wednesday night. Oh, well, tonight's the party afterwards at uh, the Sunset Room. Thank you. Ten dollars. It's pretty cheap. Um, we're going to do a raffle just at around 4.20 or so. I understand you guys are going to try to leave here pretty quick, though, right? So if you want to uh, have a moment with Michelle and Jeff, uh, you know, we'll wrap up some more. Yeah. Pardon? Yeah, they brought t-shirts and stuff uh, for treating yourself. And we'll, we'll, we'll try to wrap it up in four so people can have a few minutes with them. Um, well, a great day, and we're going to top it off with, I would have to think, the foremost lawyer in the country on this issue, not necessarily because he has the precedence that in some ways we would all like to, to, to see in this field, but certainly uh, Kirk has been working uh, in the courtroom and out of the courtroom for so many hours a week, I bet it's causing family strife. Because I'm constantly reading stuff that he's written, I don't know how many letters to the editor he's had published in the last six months alone, but uh, in some ways, uh, I think the conservative government has, has put a little bit of fire in, in Kirk's belly, and I would have to say that our recent fight against uh, uh, Bill C-15 uh, was in part successful due to the work that Kirk did. You went all the way to the Senate committees, right? Yeah. This guy is just going full tilt, and I'm so honored to have him here. Lit up the stage a few years ago at a convention, and I, I am so glad to have him back again. And thank you so much, Kurt, for, for making it down here.
lot of time litigating, particularly cases involving medical marijuana, uh, which is a subject I know near and dear to Ted's heart, near and dear to the hearts of many people here. Uh, and I wanted to thank Ted very much for inviting me down again this year. I, I really appreciate it. It's your last year um, at the 10th annual convention. I recognize some familiar faces, so I know there were others here at the same time. Uh, I talked then about the status of medical marijuana in the courts uh, in Canada as well as politically, and I'm maybe today just going to bring us up to date a little bit because a lot has gone on uh, in the last year, and I think a lot is still going to happen in the next probably six months to one year from now with Canada's medical marijuana regime. Uh, a year ago, I just finished litigation in a case called Army Baron uh, and Swallow, which essentially involved the producer of medical marijuana for the Vancouver Island Compassion Society, uh, Matt Barrett. Uh, and the judge, after a, a very lengthy trial and a whole bunch of evidence from, uh, well, about 10 different lay witnesses, five expert witnesses, and uh, of course the other side's uh, various expert witnesses, decided that some aspects of the medical marijuana access regulations were unconstitutional, that violated the charter. Two in particular struck them out and gave the government a year to sort of try to fix the regime. Uh, and the two aspects that were stricken were the fact that a designated producer of marijuana, somebody licensed by the government to grow marijuana for somebody who uses it for medical purposes, could only grow for one person and one person only, uh, not for two, not for three, not for four, five, ten. Mr. Barron was producing for the VIX, which at the time of his arrest in 05 had 400 members. Uh, and he was essentially their sole source of supply at that point in time. So you can see, factually, it, it makes a lot of sense to have one person, variety of strains, somebody knows what they're doing, producing marijuana for a number of people. And the judge agreed with that uh, and struck that restriction out as unconstitutional. That wasn't the first time it was stricken as unconstitutional. It was stricken by the courts in 2003, 2005, 2008 as unconstitutional. The very same restriction, the government sort of kept sticking it back in there. Uh, and, and the judge also, took away the, the restriction that only allowed three licenses to be at any one physical location. So say you wanted to form a community garden with two other patients, you could. With three other patients, you couldn't um, because that restriction was in place. And the judge found that to be arbitrary. The government didn't have any real good reasons for justifying these restrictions. They mouthed a lot of talk about how uh, with big grows, there'd be an increased risk of diversion to the black market. You know, as our sort of point was, you know, a couple of thousand medical patients versus a six billion dollar market in British Columbia. I mean, seriously, you know, the, the, the police sort of say they can bust the girl every day of the week, all day long, and use all their staff members to do it. Uh, I don't think the risk of diversion of the black market is sort of a, a reality. And, and the other side couldn't point to any actual cases of it ever happening. And, and our point was, like, wouldn't you rather have 50 big grows than 5,000 small ones? Wouldn't it be easier to inspect them and regulate them and things like that? And the judge agreed with us. So that was good. Uh, first of all, right? And, and the, gave the, gave the uh, government a year to fix the program. Now, in that year, a lot of interesting things happened. Uh, we fought an appeal because uh, we lost some aspects of the case that we didn't think we should have lost. And the government appealed because they didn't want to give up the rules. Uh, all the way up to the Supreme Court of Canada. The Supreme Court of Canada said, we don't want the case. We're not interested in taking it. We're not granting leave to appeal. Another case that had been out of Ontario had made its way to the Supreme Court of Canada on a leave application, and the court said, we don't want that case either. And that case dealt with this one-to-one -one ratio, and also struck it as unconstitutional in a case involving 18 people who all wanted a company to grow for them. Uh, and, and the judge in that case said, yeah, you're right, that one-to-one -one ratio doesn't make any sense at all. It's arbitrary, it violates these patients' rights, and commanded the Minister of Health to reconsider the applications of those 18 people that wanted this one company to grow for them. What did the government do in response? In, in May of last year, the government made a new rule. And the new rule is you can now grow for two patients. Yay. You used to be Yay. one, now you can grow for two. <laughs> now, I, I tend to think that's a little bit of thumb in your nose at the courts, a little bit contentious. I don't think it's in good faith. The government sort of covered itself a little bit. 